Wow, hello there. Apparently, I look just like Voldemort. Do you see it? I'm not too sure. I, uh, I had to kind of check it out. There's been a lot of people on this channel who've left comments saying, oh look, Voldemort's giving voice lessons. Voldemort's doing this, Voldemort's doing that. And, I, and, and okay, yeah, I get it. But it's just another bald guy. It's just another bald guy. And one, one thing that happens when your hair falls out is that you look like everyone else that has no hair, unfortunately, including Gollum, uh, Voldemort, and whoever else has bald head. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a few porn stars as well, apparently. <coughs> so, Lord Voldemort is a character played by Ralph Fiennes in the Harry Potter series. Hey, how are you? I'm really sorry to just butt in on your video right now, but I seem to have made a little bit of a mistake in the pronunciation of Rafe Fine's name. Of course, I've had to, but I've been editing the video and I've just realized I've been saying Ralph Fines because that's how it's spelt. And, but that's not the pronunciation. The pronunciation is Rafe Fines. okay? So as I go through this video saying Ralph Fines, I apologize now, so you don't have to comment, you don't have to tell me, I've recognized it, I know it. Thank you very much for your support and we can get back to the video now. You're a fool, Harry Potter. Oh, the first thing I noticed right there is that, oh, it sounds like Ralph Fiennes. Uh, oh, because it is Ralph Fiennes. So, what's he doing that's different to Ralph Fiennes? How is he embodying this character? Well, you can see that he doesn't really have much of a nose and it seems to be a bit covered up and stretched down there. Um, and the way he's interpreted this as a character, the way Voldemort speaks, is very breathy. And that maybe is because there's a problem with the nose, but I think if the nose was kind of shut off, it might have more this sound, this like more nasally sound to it. But Ra Ralph, Ralph Fiennes has got quite a specific sounding voice anyway. But anyway, what he's done there, did you hear that? Let's play it again. You're a fool, Harry Potter. You're a fool, Harry Potter. He's uh, being really breathy and allowing so much air to kind of travel through as he's speaking. So his vocal folds aren't completely coming together and making a full sound. They're like that and they're sort of kind of open still. So they're not, uh, it's more breath and so he's creating the vowel sounds in his mouth and he's not allowing the vocal folds to come together as much as they can. You're a fool, Harry Potter. You're a fool, Harry Potter. Sounds like an owl. Um, yeah, okay, so that's the first observation. Let's carry on. And you will lose. And you will lose. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if I do look like uh, Voldemort. He's an ugly bugger. And um, thanks very much for those people that have left that as a comment. And there's been a few. <laughs> uh, but anyway, hmm, yeah, well, I guess. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. So, he, uh, yeah, he's doing that breathy thing again. But what he did just th then. Harry Potter. He really lowered his larynx and and allowed for this sound to be much more rounded. So even though he's kind of whispering, he's breathy, it's still very full. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. It makes a certain thing happen if you drop your larynx down and whisper. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. He's also got very loose cheeks. I noticed that. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. He's not doing much with them, he's just allowing them to blur, just to like hang loose. So when he speaks, he's just Harry Potter. He's not doing much actually, he's quite relaxed. He's quite, um, it's effortless the way he's doing that. And, that, and that's a great way for all of us to uh, discover ways of speaking, is to find relaxation, whatever we're doing, whether we're learning accents or whether we're speaking for ourselves or whatever it is we're doing, effort is what we're aiming to get to. So the words and the expressions we have to share uh, don't have to be thought about consciously, they can just whew, flow. The boy who lived. The boy who lived. Did you hear that extra lived? lived. He's still articulating even though he's breathy and whispering. Lived. Lived. He's finishing his words, so he's making sure that it's fully pronounced. Um, which is which is a choice, but he's also quite a you know he's a very uh, 
accomplished actor and so I think it would be hard for him not to articulate words because that's part of his job is to be heard and to transmit messages through words and, and actions so the boy who lived boy who lived it's very subtle it's very small but it's there and actually that, that sounds great on a microphone because uh, it's very different in an auditorium where you really have to um, lived to finish words. Here it's very subtle, lived. Live, live, the boy who lived. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Um, I don't know quite what he's saying, abracadabra maybe? <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea what he says. I've got no subtitles for it. Let's listen one more time. Yeah, he's doing this thing, kind of almost like he's compressing his voice. He's not allowing the sound to completely go out. He's holding back and keeping in his throat. And it's almost like it creates this. Um, appearance of volume but it's not loud and so he's it's coming so he's dropping his chin so as opposed to where sound might usually escape from your mouth like he's going and really holding it back and it could be that he's using his tongue to do this so if I put my back of my tongue right up high in my mouth, you can hear the difference. So that could be one way he's doing that. He's certainly using his diaphragm. You can really do it without that. So you need that support, so you need air, but you're not letting all the air out. So you're kind of somehow restricting the air from leaving. And maybe that's partly how he's, what he's doing with his tongue there is to, to reduce this sort of amount of air that comes out. So it goes up higher into his mouth and into his nasal cavity. And it's almost like he's just about to throw up. You know, it's like that retching feeling. And that's what happens with a, uh, singers when they're doing kind of fry screaming, vocal compression, they're like, <laughs> Those kind of sounds, but he's going abracadabra, <laughs> whatever he's saying. So I don't think that's how he's doing that. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got to say for Voldemort. I wanted to cover him because a, it's been asked for many times, and b, people keep calling me Voldemort <laughs> and saying that I'm the I don't know the Voldemort voice coach of YouTube or whatever. Anyway, I, 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 either way, I wanted to do it, and it's an interesting voice. He's an interesting actor, actually. Uh, Ralph finds you. He's done a lot of different roles, but he always sounds like himself. Um, and that's not, that doesn't mean he's bad. It means actually that's very good because he's comfortable in his own skin and that his voice is, is good enough to, to transmit uh, to all these different characters and different roles that he's played. He doesn't have to change it. And that's something worth acknowledging if you're looking to get into voiceover work or acting is that you don't have to change yourself. Um, uh, people's imagination will fit to what, what you, with the intentions that you have behind your voice and, and what you're saying and the, and the emotions you connect with are a lot more important than uh, just doing silly voices. Anyway, so that's my little review of Voldemort. Thank you for watching. I'm Darren McStay. This is Improve Your Voice. And until the next time, look after your voice! Yes. Yeah.